Associates Coliseum in Oakland, California, down to the final game of the regular season. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Oakland Raiders. It's been tougher to figure the playoff situation than 10th grade calculus, but we do know this. The Raiders have won the West, and with a win today, they'll have home field the rest of the way. The Kansas City Chiefs, they have to win and look for help to make it to the playoff party. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg, Happy New Year. It's a festive atmosphere here at the Oakland Coliseum. What a rivalry this has been. This is their 85th meeting. There have been two ties, and each of these two teams have won 41 times, going back to the old AFL years, Dan Deardorff. And, uh, well, quarterback for the Oakland Raiders on a wet field, you might as well go to a high school rowing star, a crew star from Philadelphia. <laughs> Why? Oh, Rich Gannon, maybe, huh? So much at stake in this game, uh, a home field advantage for the Raiders. And why wouldn't you want a guy who's in the running for NFL MVP to run the show? 400, that's right, 411 completions on the year. That is an ongoing NFL record. Now, that means somebody's catching an awful lot of footballs for the Raiders. How about this trio? With, when Tim Brown is coming in third, you know good things are happening. Charlie Garner, the running back, with 91 and counting. And Jerry Porter, he's the touchdown threat, not even on that list. He has nine touchdown catches. How about Kansas City? Well, all right, Priest Holmes, we know, is not going to play, and thus goes the Kansas City rushing attack, unless we're all in for a huge surprise. That means Trent Green, the quarterback, is he's having such a wonderful year, but he's going to have to maybe have his best day of the year. Now, Muddy Field, who would you go to? How about this guy, the all-world tight end, Tony Gonzalez. Let him go up for the jump balls. Let him mud it out. That's what I'd do if I was Kansas City. Bad weather, bad field. They call that the great equalizer. What do you think? I think the short passing game of the Raiders has a huge advantage in this kind of weather. Starting lineups, opening kickoff, coming up. They expected one to two inches of rain this afternoon. Temperature at 50 degrees and winds up into the high 30s. For more on the field condition, down to Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, not only is it raining and not planning on getting better, but the winds picked up and the temperatures actually dropped in about 10 minutes after it started raining here, about 12:30. The Raiders logo at midfield was already going underwater. Now that's a disadvantage for the Chiefs, possibly for two reasons. One, of course, they don't have Priest Holmes. Two, they don't have a running game in place for the weather, unlike the Raiders. They said they will run special runs and plays depending on the weather, and it sure is, it looks like it'll come in handy today. All right, thank you, Bonnie, and uh, here is the confirmation of how close this rivalry has been. No one with the advantage coming into this one, although Oakland's won five of the last six, and they've been closely contested regardless of the victory. Sebastian Janikowski leads the NFL in touchbacks on kickoffs with 20, and Dante Hall, the little fireball return man for Kansas City, has three touchdowns on kick returns. He's at the 14. In trying to make a move to elude Janikowski, Hall just gave up the ball. What an opportunity for Kansas City to start this game. Of course, Janikowski's going to tell everybody, I scared him so badly, he dropped the football. Janikowski, one of the biggest kickers in the league. Now, he did a good job by pinning him to the sidelines. And you know what? I don't think that's the last time we're going to see the football on the field today, Dick. <laughs> I don't think that's it. It's the team that gives it up the least that's going to have the best chance, obviously. And Kansas City this year is going after an NFL record. They've lost only two fumbles the entire season, fewest in the NFL and fewest ever in the NFL. Three is the record. 55-yard return by Dante Hall. The Chiefs start outside the 37 of Oakland, and Trent Green looking down the middle, and incomplete Rod Woodson knocks it away from Tony Gonzalez. Chiefs offense features one of the top offensive lines in the NFL. Rope and shields to the Pro Bowl. No one appreciates their work more than quarterback Trent Green. The keys for us today offensively, we have to have a big day out of our offensive line. Willie Rofe and John Tate are going to have to have big days, not only in pass protection, but in the running game. And in the passing game, Tony Gonzalez and Eddie Kennison are going to have to come up big. And, of course, the first target of Green was Gonzalez, who played his college ball just up the road at the University of California. Time called by one of the linesmen before the snap is made. Oakland. Oakland this is first charge team timeout. Calls a timeout just 14 seconds into the game. Come back. 
back, everybody. Well, the Raiders got six guys up here and count them one, two, three, four, five, six guys back there. And that's after they ran one guy off down here at the bottom. They had 13 and got it down to 12, still over the limit and had to take the timeout. So second down and 10 from the 38. Michael Cloud, and he has stopped me, have gained a yard. Cloud playing for the injured Priest Holmes as we look at the starters on defense for the Raiders. They're the fourth best in the league against the rush. Intensity measured in that linebacking core by veteran Bill Romanowski Spirit and Rod Woodson. Two more interception touchdowns this year. 12 is the most ever in NFL history. And Bill Callahan, who had never been a head coach in his entire career at 46, named the head man here of the Raiders this season and has done a fabulous job. Takes his team to a third consecutive AF West title. Third down and 10. Green, a lot of time and open and incomplete is Mark Bowrichter as that ball skidding through his hands and off that wet chest in front of Rod Woodson. Conventional wisdom is that the advantage is to the receiver on a sloppy field because he knows where he's going. Mark Bowrichter went into a slide. It looked like he was going to be able to catch the football, and you see Tony Gonzalez. Anywhere he goes, he's going to be a target. But when Bowrichter tried to react, his feet slid out from under him. Dan Straczynski tried to hit it high and short. Tim Brown at the 10-yard line. Brown fakes as if he's going to receive it and it works he slows down the chief rush and the ball into the end zone for the touchback first down for rich gannon and the raiders at the 20 the raiders own the number one offense in the league record-setting passing game with tim brown again a premier receiver for the raiders my keys to victory are we must do better in the red zone. The last time we played this team, we were horrible in the red zone. So we must put points on the board. Also, it could be a very sloppy day today. We must protect the football. If we can do that, we will win. Well, Tim Brown and the Raiders knew of the weekend forecast that this uh, front was coming in. So they've been working, as Bonnie indicated, on a second game plan in case there are conditions like the ones we're experiencing now. The give is to Charlie Gunner, and the little running back gets a couple of yards to the 22. Dwayne Clemens makes the tackle, and here are the Chiefs defensive starter there. Eric Hicks leads in sacks with nine. The veteran uh, Marcus Patton with Fujita and Meslowski at linebacker, and Greg Wesley, their leader in interceptions with six, is out. More pressure on cornerback. Eric Warfield for Dick Vermeil. Vermeil in his second year in Kansas City and brings his team in with a chance for a winning record this year. They're eight and seven. And, you know, he's such a positive guy. He's convinced his team that good things can happen to good teams and we're going to make it into the playoffs. On second and eight, Gannon all day to look and then throws underneath complete to Porter and he struggles to the 31 in the first down. Maslowski makes the tackle. Well, if ever early in a game we see something that's emblematic of the receiver running the types of pattern that Oakland has run all year, we've got about a one-yard completion to Jerry Porter, and yet the yards after the catch, he moves the chains. That, that may have been a one-yard pass by Rich Gannon, but because of the running abilities of these Raider receivers, it ends up a first down. And this ball going to be snapped in a small pond at the 31-yard line. Tim Brown in motion. And uh, before the snap, Barry uh, Sims uh, moving. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That'll take the ball back out of the, uh, the building water puddle there between the 25 and 30 yard line. We talked about a different game plan for the Raiders uh, because of the field condition and simply what that is is they'd like to play more of the game out by the numbers. That's if the middle of the field deteriorates which you can see it's doing that in a hurry. They'll make an attempt to play the game out around the drier portions of the field which is out by the numbers. And we saw the effect of that. Dante Hall took that route on that opening kickoff return and breaking into the open is Charlie Garner. The old is back out to the 40, just short of a first down. Jason Belser playing for the injured Greg Wesley makes the tackle. 
Well, the people who really follow football and understand the game know the value of Charlie Garner. We saw that he has 91 receptions coming into this game, but his all-purpose usage, and look at how he chops. No long strides here. The short chops, the, he knows he's got a bad field underneath him, keeping the legs driving, but closer together. But Charlie Garner and his value to the Raiders cannot be overstated, and he's over on the sideline. Tyrone Wheatley in, the power back, the hammer, and he gets the handoff and a first down out to the 44-yard line. Wayne Clemens makes the stop. Again, all at stake for the Raiders, and they know well what a defeat in the final game means. If they win today, they clinch home field, and they don't have to leave the Golden State. They go down to San Diego for the Super Bowl, lose, and you could be in Pittsburgh, Tennessee, or Miami. You think Bill Callahan might have told his team in the locker room about the Philadelphia Eagles, who had a chance earlier today to wrap up home field advantage and didn't do it? I would, uh, I think he might have talked about that a little bit. And Rich Gannon talks about last year when the Jets came in in the last game and beat the Raiders. And Sweetly powers his way close to midfield. Meanwhile, Kansas City, they have to win today to go 9-7. and seven. Then the key is Denver, Arizona tomorrow. Denver must lose to the Cardinals in order for the uh, Chiefs to entertain hopes, and then New England or, New <laughs> or the Jets or Cleveland it becomes uh, uh, more we, complicated. We I start suppose. with Denver, that's an automatic, but then they always need at least one other team to lose in all the other scenarios. It's a long shot, a very long shot for the Chiefs. Second down, about five. Wheatley trying to pick his way and runs into John Browning, one of the tough defensive tackles against the run out of West Virginia. And and it's so tough because they're playing hurt. They really are playing without their starting running backs. Tony Richardson on IR as well with the shoulder. Priest Holmes is gone. And then they don't have either one of their safeties either. They lost Jerome Woods during training camp, and now Greg Wesley is out. So the Chiefs talk about having to play shorthand. Out of a no huddle, it's third and four. Gannon with the two star receivers to the right, and he tries to throw the ball. Fujita, the rookie linebacker from California, thought he had a sack. Fujita untouched here at the bottom. He just wraps up Gannon, but Gannon doesn't go down, and then just a, a swing. Look at this. <laughs> like throwing a bag of potatoes up on the truck. Well, how about the catch? This ball was about two inches from the ground. What a piece of work by Jerry Porter. And it's close enough for a measurement. <laughs> That ball, the nose of that ball couldn't have been more than two or three inches off the ground. Considering the fact that it's soaking wet, that was some effort by Jerry Porter. A foot short of the first down brings up fourth. Do you, do you think Rich Gannon is it the odds-on favorite to be the NFL MVP? He's been doing this all season long. Of course, it helps to get a lot of help from the guys he's got that are catching the football. <laughs> Great work, you guys. The cameramen, women, the replays. We are going to have some sensational shots in the, these weather conditions. The skies seem a bit lighter. The rain continues to fall. As you see, the Gannons had uh, more than reasonable success on fourth downs this year, four out of six. short yardage runner number 32 is a tailback he gets it and dives four didn't need much he got a yard it's a, going to be right on that yellow line and that is a bold move by bill callahan give him credit conventional wisdom would be hey pin this chief's offense way back in their own territory with a little pooch punt but at midfield, taking a chance on fourth and short. That's, well, why not? Lincoln Kennedy, number 72, Mo Collins, Barrett Robbins, another pro bowler. And the guy, as Dick said, who never lets him down in short yardage, Zach Crockett. But that's still, that's a, that's a gutsy call by Callahan. 
Crockett is averaging 1.6 yards a carry this year, but that certainly doesn't tell the story. He's made 10 out of 11 third and ones. There's a fourth and one, and he scored seven touchdowns. What a message he sends to his offensive line, though. Your, your chest puffs up when you're in a huddle, and the coach has enough faith in you to go for it on fourth and short this early in a football game. That's a confidence-inspiring move by Callahan. Well, two pro bowlers up there in Lincoln Kennedy and center Barry. Fumble by Gannon, but no one uh, with a white jersey near the ball. It'll be a loss of about a yard. Uh, we we said when Dante Hall dropped it that that wouldn't be the first. This won't be the last. This won't be the last either. Ball didn't even get oh, it there. didn't even get it. Looked like it slipped out of Barrett Robbins' hands. It started on the way up, but it looked like he lost control of it, bumping his leg on the way up. Takes a lot of concentration when the ball gets to be this wet by both center and QB. Triple left and then Brown in motion. And then the handoff inside to Garner. Picks the spot. Boy, he's slippery. And down to the 39-yard line he goes. Where it'll be third down and three, and we go to B squared. Well, Dick, Bill Callahan was saying he was amazed at how some of the Kansas City media asked which players he was going to sit for this game. He said, I can't believe how they think just because Priest Holmes is down that Kansas City is going to lie down. They're trying to find a playoff spot, too. He said, we're planning on having this game come down to the fourth quarter, down to the last minute. That way, if the scenario is different, it's a lot easier to adjust. Yeah, that's right, Bonnie. The mindset was this is going to be a game decided in the final minutes of the fourth quarter, so let's play like it. Third and four. Gannon, plenty of time, Wheatley, now under normal conditions, Wheatley would have pulled that in, but that ball, it's a wet rock, and you're trying to feel your way through the wet turf, incomplete. Well, Tyrone Wheatley is a much better runner than he is a receiver. Uh, this is not his specialty. And, and Rich Gannon put the ball up. Yeah, it's it's high. It could have been a lot lower. And that would have been a very tough catch under these conditions. But keep in mind, uh, uh, Charlie Garner is the receiver out of the backfield. Wheatley only has a dozen catches on the year. The brilliant Dante Hall, who has returned every Kansas City punt this year, is back. We've already seen his talent as Shane Leckler hits a wobbler. The fair catch by Hall. At his 13-yard line. So each team with a chance. No score here in Oakland. Seven minutes remain in the opening quarter. The damp of the spirits of these uh, devoted Oakland Raider fans. Uh, they were here early and they were bringing their voices. Today's matchup, you see yards per game. They're one and two in the NFL. The top offenses in the league. Although Kansas City's number one as far as points scored. I'll take that over yards. Priest Holmes, the top touchdown maker in the league, not here with that injury. The quick toss is a successful one to Mike Cloud, and then he is belted by Terran Shaw after a gain of about seven. Say, folks, log on to NFL.com, get the latest on the playoff picture market at the 19, second down and four. inside and uh, it's cloud again who uh, picks up a couple of yards and then uh, gets up again and all, of sudden, was... all of a sudden Mike cloud realized that he hadn't heard a whistle blow the officials on the spot ruling that at least initially it looked like he wasn't down by contact where are they going to spot this ball back where he went down initially there wasn't a whistle but there was a loud gurgle I think the whistle was loaded up with uh, some of this precipitation <laughs> Looks like somebody yelled at Cloud, keep going. Third down and a long two. Hall is the slot man. And they get it inside to Cloud, and Cloud is close to the first down. John Perello, former San Diego Charger, nine years down south, and a big uh, unrestricted free agent pickup. Uh, they praise his ability to, to tie up two men in that offensive line. When two talented guys are the people he'll have to tie up, because if the Chiefs have a fallback position in this game, it's going to be their offensive line. They might be the best offensive line in the National Football League. Grove, Waters, Wigman, Shields, and Tate. 
So without, you know, he, Priest Holmes is gone, Richardson is gone, but the outstanding blockers remain. Cloud picked up the first down, fake to Cloud, and Green underneath, complete. At the 31-yard line, Eddie Kennison, his first reception today, and a gain of around seven. Terrence Shaw, the tackler. As I watch Kansas City play, Dick Vermeil said, the one thing I know for sure, I don't have to worry about effort. That will be there. And I will not talk about players who are injured. I will not even mention their names because you do not plant the seeds of an excuse in the remaining players' minds. They're good enough. You're here in the NFL. You win it. Go earn your paycheck. Second and short. Handoff inside the cloud and read well by defensive end the Lawrence Grant, the second-year defender from Oregon State. Reese Holmes, how much do you take out of the offense when he is left at home? Those He's are staggering numbers. 24 touchdowns. Yes. He only two behind Marshall Falk's NFL record, which you have to assume if he would have been able to play in the two remaining games that he missed, he would have broken that record. He probably would have led the NFL in rushing. But we've been told that Kansas City insists it's not a career-threatening injury. Third and two, the quick throw is incomplete. Derek Blaylock just into the game, covered well by Eric Barton. Just to underline Priest Holmes, it's not only his uh, statistics, but his spirit. He met the team as they left yesterday for Oakland, as you see again, the, the troubles in the great okay. pictures. <laughs> and, and unfortunately for Kansas City, it was a perfectly thrown pass by Trent Green. He could not have dropped that in any better onto the hands of Blaylock. Veritable aqua slide. Straczynski handles a low snap, a short, wobbly kick. Takes no bounce at all and is down at the 45. Yeah, Holmes saw the team off yesterday say, just like war, you leave the wounded at home, but go get them in Oakland. Bring yours a happy new year. Big tackle named after two presidents. Bigger. The University of Washington. And bigger than two presidents. <laughs> and one of the nicest guys in the game. What a good guy. He's Mount Rushmore on that oh. right side of the line going to his third Pro Bowl. Gannon fires and complete. And it's Jerry Rice with his first catch in front of William Barty. The Raiders have been the best in the league in scoring in the first quarter. 116 points. Well, you think this guy has any experience in running uh, patterns in sloppy weather? Just playing uh, his career across the bay at uh, Candlestick, which uh, notoriously for, you know, really notorious for having a bad field. Jerry Rice uh, may be the best in the business if you put him on a muddy track. Chop, 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 chop. That, uh, that's yep. what his feet are going to look like. 257 games in a row now that Rice has caught a pass. And it's Garner skirting the left side and has a first down at the Kansas City 45. And this rain and wet field has created some interesting pictures. Well, you knew the minute that uh, it started to rain, we were going to see things like this. All fumbles. Gonzalez gets knocked out. Look at Charlie Garner. Football's rolling around on the field. It's And it's only going to get worse. The rain is still coming down, but to the field, even if it stopped raining right now, the damage has been done. 25 to the 25, you hydroplane if you're in the middle of the field. Gannon, plenty of time. He's going to scramble and slides down at the 41. Well, tomorrow night, as always, Sunday night means 60 minutes on. Trestman, who's the offensive coordinator for the Raiders and who deserves major kudos for the way he has distributed the ball, kept everybody happy, and he's been very innovative. Gannon with Garner in the backfield. Three wides. Rice and Brown to the left. Pumps to Porter. Down the middle is Brown. Wide open to the 20-yard line. And on a dry field, that was a touchdown. Ray Crockett was the Kansas City corner that was attempting the coverage. But the play action and the pump has a lot of meaning when you run the ball like the Raiders. And then out of that pile of people comes that sidearm sling from Rich Gannon. <laughs> it, it wasn't perfect, 
It wasn't perfect. It was well behind Tim Brown, but under these kind of conditions, it was more than acceptable, and Brown did a nice job of reacting back to the football, and luckily, Crockett's coverage was so far off, he could do so. Brown now over 1,000 catches. He's second to Rice in most yardage receiving, and now it's Garner's turn. Runs right by the defensive back. I don't know what he was looking at, and he's out of bounds, close to another first down at the 10. Well, I hate to talk about Ray Crockett again, but what was he doing? What? You're going to see number 39 come up from the left-hand side right here. Ray, what are you doing? Your job is to tackle the guy with the football, and Charlie Garner just ducks to the outside. And I, it's like mud flew up in his eyes or something. He didn't see him. Ball spotted at the 11. First down, Raiders. Down to the final minute of this opening quarter. It's Garner for a yard. Charlie Garner with the carry. Stuffed by Lou Bush, the veteran linebacker from Washington State. These guys right now are playing on, by far and away, the best part of this field. They're inside the 10-yard line here, going into the end zone to our left. As you survey this field, certainly appears to be the, the best footing and the most solid chunk of ground inside the Coliseum. They have to run a play before the end of the quarter, down to 15 seconds. Yeah, if they don't score, they're going to have to move. to the top of your picture, two tight ends, and back to Garner. He cuts inside, and he's down to the two. Fujita made the tackle a yard short of the first down. At the end of this opening quarter, when we come back, the Raiders just a couple yards away from taking the early lead. Here at the Coliseum today as we go to the second quarter. Ball at the two-yard line, third down and one for the Raiders trying to get on the board first. And those are the puddles uh, out around where first base and third base are for the alignment of the Oakland A's. Uh, that's the 25 to 30-yard lines. They've converted 78 percent down in third and one, and that's because of the success of Zach Crockett in that offensive line. Let's see if Crockett is in there. Yes. With John Ritchie, the fullback, lined up in front of him. And second timeout spent by the Raiders. Gannon didn't uh, like the call against that defense, apparently. Second quarter will start again. Only 25 yards rushing in the red zone, but how productive he has been. Zach Crockett, seven touchdowns. This is a third and one after the timeout. And this is where Bill Callahan likes to use two big linemen as uh, bookends, although he does have Doug Jolly as a tight end. The give to Crockett hits the middle of the line, and he needed one for the first down. He didn't get the touchdown, but appears to be inside the one and a first and goal. Marcus Patton met him in the hole. Well, that was the change they made when Rich Gannon took the timeout. He had the wrong personnel out on the field because Matt Stimpscombe was at one tight end, Walker at the other. As you said, Jolly comes in. And take a look at that. Marcus Patton meets Zach Crockett two yards from where they end up. But the advantage really lies with Crockett there. Pretty tough for a linebacker to get a good, solid footing to try to slow down a 250-pound guy coming straight at you. Ooh, umpire goes down. Crockett, but a flag into the center of the pile. And you see the linesman is not as yet signal touchdown, but let's Ooh. see. Daryl Jenkins, the umpire, he threw that flag with some velocity. He was he, that flag was yeah, thrown in anger. Here. That was a kind of a Nolan Ryan, uh, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely got hold. hold. You can see, you can see him telling Tony to Carrente that uh, I've got holding in there. Well, first and goal inside the one. How punishing is this penalty? It was a lineman. You always hated it when an official threw a flag like that. It was like I'm not holding you. Don't take it so personally that you 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 wing it like that. Tony Carentes, our referee. Holding, offense, number 63. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Center Barrett Robbins going to his first Pro Bowl. Had a great year. 
Well, congratulations to Barrett Robbins for his uh, first Pro Bowl. I, I know how exciting that is. You dream all your life about, am I good enough to, to go to a Pro Bowl? Uh, do my fellow players and fans and coaches think that I'm worthy? And when you finally get that, when you finally get that notification, your heart instantly goes to about 150 beats a minute. And a penalty out to the 10 and a half, first and goal. And it's going to the middle. And he's all the way to the one before Shenard Hartz can make the tackle from a safety spot. Oh, look at this job by Robbins, Collins, and Kennedy over to the right side. Barrett Robbins just moves John Browning out of the way, and Charlie Garner, boy, when a running back gets to go downhill like that, even when you're not a big guy, you still take advantage. Second and goal from the one. Oh, they're confused again here. Gannon and Porter and Brown. So Porter just locks in now, goes in motion. And it's Garner easily walks it in for the touchdown. His seventh rushing touchdown, his 11th total this year. Well, the confusion at the beginning of the play looked like it belonged to the Raiders. At the end of the play to Kansas City as Charlie Garner is not even touched until Eric Warfield gives him a little nudge back in the end zone after he's already scored. That drive started after the short punt by Straczynski of 24 yards as the Raiders took over at the 45. Janikowski for the point after. And the Raiders go 55 yards in 10 plays. A little over five minutes to take the lead. 7-0, 13 minutes left in the first half. Whether by design or influenced by the weather, out of character, the Raiders, the number one passing team in the NFL, have thrown only five passes, but have run 16 times, and Garner paying off that 55-yard drive from one yard away as Janikowski lines one down to Hall, and it scoots into the end zone. Hall will take the touchback. Pretty much of a perfect kick, of course, for a guy whose nickname is Seabass. He'd be right at home in this weather, wouldn't he? <laughs> you hook him, you got a big one, too. Tough to get in the boat. <laughs> a happy new year, 2003, means continued action in the playoffs. 7 nothing. Oakland from the 20, green to throw. Skips away. Boy, that was clever. And races to the 25, and boom, the skid, the slide, the submariner is out of bounds. Napoleon Harris makes the tackle. Well, if Trent wasn't soaked before that, he is soaked now. <laughs> Needs to go in the rinse cycle. This looks like turkey bowling when he, <laughs> when he hits. He used to be able to put one of these in the backyard and put the hose on it, and away he went. A lot of entertainment when you were a kid for not much in the way of money I'd say Trent got about a 9.4 on that slide yeah and six yards to, to boot screen complete and it's Derek Blaylock has some speed and all the way out to the 47 yard line and the first down Blaylock his first catch of the season he's playing because of the injury of course to priest holmes well a couple good blocks here the first one's going to come from brian waters who's out in front right there although it looked to me to be from behind and then center casey wigman look at the block that he gets right there on rookie napoleon harris the middle linebacker waters uh, waters uh, kind of made a little nudge in the back there he uh, i think he spun around looking for the flag and was mighty glad to find that there wasn't one on the field 21-yard play from the 47. Green stumbles as he leaves center, throws into the flat for Gonzalez, and uh, no chance. And look who was covering Gonzalez, number 99, DeLorence Grant, the defensive end. Well, you saw that variation there by Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator of the Raiders, came with the all-out blitz up the middle and had the coverage by a defensive lineman. Took a real chance there. There is Bresnahan. Said at the officials might still be complaining about that clip. Second and ten, the draw played a cloud, and uh, that's what he ran into a black and silver cloud, a heavy one. Cumulus, Nimbus. <laughs> Electricity in that defensive charge. 
Trace Armstrong not playing today for the Raiders. Uh, he had a groin that he hurt last week in the game against Denver. And uh, so we're having to fill in guys like uh, Iwane and Upshaw and Chris Cooper are going to have to fill. What a game Armstrong had last oh, week. Huh? Three sacks and an interception. Not a bad day. And he's over the 100 sack mark in his great career. Gonzalez and Dunn, two tight ends on third and ten. Down the middle, almost intercepted, and Rod Woodson and uh, Derek Gibson, and it was Gibson, I believe, who made the initial move. And uh, 26 and 36 trying to collaborate on an interception. Well, this was uh, real close to six points. Real close to six points. <laughs> Does Rod Woodson do uh, that as well as anyone who's ever played? Well, he's just a ball magnet. And normally he converts that, but you can see how wet it is. Ball went right to his hands and hit him right in the face mask. If he wasn't wearing a face mask, he'd have a bloody nose. Brzezinski just does get this wobbler away, and it dies in the water at the 25-yard line. That was Zach Crockett putting pressure on the putter. Another short kick, 28 yards for Straczynski. Our producer, Lance Barrow, and Mike Arnold, our director, Dick Enberg, Dan Deardorff, Bonnie Bernstein from rainy Oakland, California, where the Raiders are trying to sew up the top seed in the AFC and stay home, stay home in California all the way to San Diego in the Super Bowl. They lead 7-0. Rich Cannon to the side, and his receiver falls down. So does William Barty on the coverage of Tim Brown. <laughs> now, Tim Brown, in 15 years, you know he's played in his fair share of sloppy fields. <laughs> and that is that is not keeping your feet underneath you. You can see he just went to plant with that right foot, got it a little, and you a little too far out in front of him. You will not hold yourself onto this field with only one spike. You need a whole insole on the field. Gannon. Throws it away. Jerry Rice was over on that sideline, but well covered by Eric Warfield. And even though this is the last ranked defense in the NFL for Kansas City, they held the Raiders to 10 points, their lowest total of the season in that loss at KC. That was 20 to 10 as Gannon circles, able to find his way free to throw it away and save the sack. And the punting team will come out. Now, not very often you see a quarterback do a tight little 360 like Rich Gannon just did in the pocket. This guy's 37 years old, and look at his movements. Well, they'll just come back, and you know what? I'll end up right where I started. Toe loop. And the pocket is still there. That's the amazing thing. Very good look at big Lincoln Kennedy right in front of him, maintaining that the credibility of that pocket. Wow, he's he is something else. Rich Gannon. He is at 37. Shane Leckler to Dante Hall. That's a beautiful kick. Ball all the way back to the 25. Oh, what a block. 40. Picks up another block. And he's wrestled down at the 43-yard line by Marcus Williams. Ray Crockett really leveled an oncoming Raider with an open field block. Timeout. 10.04 left in the half. Welcome back. Second quarter, 10 minutes before the intermission. The Raiders lead 7-0, but... Good return by Hall, ever dangerous regardless of the conditions, has the Chiefs at their own 43. And Trent Green, a little shovel pass to Hall, and he's tripped up after a gain of four to the 47. A good move by the Chiefs trying to get the ball to Hall because of his open field prowess. Of course, as we just saw on that punt return, Dante Hall. But watch this. That's Alvis Witted. He has the unenviable task of trying to tackle Dante Hall, but then he just gets cleaned by Clint Finley, number 38. Coming from your left. What a shot. What a shot by Finley. And he waited. He waited until Witted had turned upfield and hit him head on. Cloud. Power 
powers his way to the Raider 49, yard and a half shy of a first down as we go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Dick, regardless of the weather, Trent Green's just happy to be playing because after being with four NFL teams, one CFL team, he really feels this is the first time in his career he's been in one place long enough to prove himself. He said, after I struggled last year, and keep in mind he threw a league-high 24 interceptions, I was so disappointed because Dick Vermeil and Al Saunders brought me over here. This year, things have turned around. One of the more prolific offenses in the league, and he said, if we can make the playoffs, it'll make it all that much more sweet. And he has been key. 26 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions for Green. Third and short, out of the backfield. What a catch by Bo Richter. And the rookie from uh, NAIA Hastings of Nebraska in a couple of years tutoring up in the CFL makes a big first catch, first down catch. Uh, Mark Bo Richter had that 99 yarder last week, and this kid is here to stay. Tremendous size at 6'3", and he even looks taller than that, but awesome speed. Awesome speed. This is a 4-4-40 guy who's just really learning the game here in the National Football League. And Dick, after talking to him, he's got tons of confidence. He does indeed. Not cockiness, but he's no. confident he belongs. First down for Green. Throws it long this time, and it's intercepted. It's intended for Bo Richter, and Ron Woodson has his eighth of the year. And I won't drop it again. I dropped one last series. Rod Woodson finds himself in great position because of his knowledge of the game. But he is such a feel for where the football is going to be. And Trent Green, I could, you could see the ball at that angle slip out of his hand. You could see it slip out of his hand. It becomes a real underthrow. And the only guy that has a shot at that is Rod Woodson. Bo Richter has no chance at it. A wet ball in the rain. A pretty easy interception for Ron Woodson. And Woodson on his way to his 11th Pro Bowl. That moves him into the number three spot all time. That's his 69th career interception. Only Night Train Lane in second place. And Paul Krause had picked off more than Ron Woodson. What a truly great, great player he has been. And at his age, he's a second eldest on the team to Jerry Rice. He's uh, well on his way to 38. Well, he had three interceptions against Tennessee in what is a monster game for the Raiders because if they end up with the same record as the Titans, it guarantees a home field advantage to the Raiders. And Rod puts it, yeah. How many times has he waved to the cameras after an interception? Chasing Paul Krause. That's something second down and eight. And there's Garner skipping through the water. And a first down out to the 34. Belser and Hart, the two safety men for Kansas City, required to make the stop. If you were paying Charlie Garner by the step, you'd owe him a lot of money after this run. <laughs> you can't. They were coming so quickly there, you can't even count them. That's the way you got to do it on a sloppy track like this. Kick mud in the eyes of the defenders. Maybe they'll miss you. From the 34, leading 7 nothing with seven minutes left in the half. It's Tyrone Wheatley as they go to the big back. And he romps out to the 44-yard line before Eric Warfield can bump him out. Ooh, the big guys are playing a little smash mouth now. Lincoln Kennedy, Mo Collins, Barrett Robbins hammering away over there. They probably average about yeah. 50 pounds a man more than the defensive line of the Chiefs. There's Lincoln right there playing with a bad groin. This is a guy that just got elected to his third straight Pro Bowl. Wheatley again. Hit at the 45, but not until he picked up a Raider first down. Derek Ransom, the biggest of the defensive linemen at 306 pounds. That's a lightweight when you talk about the offensive line of the Raiders. And I'm watching Lincoln Kennedy try to get back to the huddle. He's an obvious pain. This is a guy that, uh, this is a guy, he's struggling right now. And if the Raiders, and if talk about incentive of getting that week off, there's a guy that could really use it because he's he's really working hard to stay in this game. Now it's Garner. Slips out of a tackle and has a first down at the Chief 43. 
Hicks made the tackle. Dwayne Clemens had him for little gain, but Garner, ever elusive, uh, takes a short gainer into a first down. I mean, keep in mind, Charlie Garner has run the football this season at almost a five and a half yard per average click. That's pretty good. And here's Big Lincoln at right tackle. Boy, when he's coming out at you, <laughs> he just gets, finds himself on Jason Belzer. I'm sure he was really excited about that. Back to Garner. Stop start. And he's down to the 39 with almost a five yard pickup before Ray Crockett can make the tackle. Uh, I, I'm going to say something really crazy about Charlie Garner. And you look at what he's done so far. Rich Gannon may win the MVP award of the National Football League. I'm not so sure Charlie Garner isn't the MVP of the Raiders. I, I don't want to discount what Rich Gannon has done because he's been extraordinary. But what Charlie Garner has meant to this football team, both running and receiving, tough to beat his ass. Completely in for him. He runs through a tackle, runs through another tackle, and down to the 32 of Raider first down. Well, this is the luxury of having two healthy running backs. But again, it's awesome blocking. It just nothing but hand tackles until Eric Warfield is able to put a shoulder into Wheatley. And what happened? Wheatley went for another four yards after the shoulder. See the first downs 12 to 3 for the Raiders with Wheatley and Garner on the ground eating up large chunks. Wheatley at 235. He looks bigger. Gets the call again, and the former Michigan Stars to the 30-yard line. On first down, a pickup of just three. Hicks and Browning collaborate on the stop, along with Eric Downing. Well, when you used to toting the leather in Ann Arbor, you you do get some use. You, you do get a little taste of, of hauling it in bad weather. Not very often, but occasionally. Well, Indian summer is what, the first of September? <laughs> Don't you? Now, wait a minute. You went to college in Michigan. I, I'm a native. I, I can, uh, I, I lived it. But he's, uh, he's used to it. Second down and seven. Garner back in. Fumble, but Garner right there to pick it up and gain a yard. Jason Belser stopped him from something even bigger. Well, that's the second bad exchange between Barrett Robbins and, and Gannon, and you see the ball just squirted right out of the hands of Barrett Robbins. That ball never even got off the ground. But look at the impossibility of making the snap out of that uh, small oh, no. lake. He's got to almost get his hand under the ball and drive it up into the hands of Rich Gannon. Almost got to scoop it. If it was basketball, you'd be called for carrying the ball, but <laughs> right. you've got to get it up there somehow. You're not going to be able to grip it from the top successfully. The ball is in the wettest spot on the field. And Gannon uses the final timeout of this half for the Raiders. They spent all three. We're down to 3.07 left in the second quarter. Raiders by a touchdown. And welcome back to wet, windy, rainy Oakland, California, where the Raiders lead 7-0. The Chiefs needing a stop here, third down and about seven, with the Raiders in possession in a big, big uh, puddle of water at the 29-yard line. And as you can see from that graphic, the Raiders are very good at playing keep away. They're monopolizing the football. Looking out in a pass formation with Garner in the backfield. Chiefs show blitz. Garner caught in the backfield, gets out of there, and then finally tackled from behind by Eric Hicks, short of the first down at the 27. Field goal from this position would be impossible, so the Raiders are going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down and about four, not six. And Gannon to throw for it over the middle, complete to Tim Brown. 16. Well, who would ever think of throwing a possession pass on a slant route to Tim Brown? This might be the first one he ever caught. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Tough to defend. A perfect throw from Rich Cannon. And the Raiders just keep grinding it out. 
Two minutes to go in the half. Oakland uh, driving deep and leading 7 0. Leaving Kennedy on the sidelines. And this is the rock and the melon. Whether the rock hits the melon or the melon hit, hits the rock, it's not good for the smaller line, the Kansas City Chiefs. It's like doing a game with Gallagher. <laughs> Hey, the reality is that the Raiders just have more weapons at their disposal right now than do the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're utilizing all of them. Give it inside, and for one of the few times, the Raider rush is stuffed. As we remind you to stay tuned for the next Nextel halftime report, join Jim, Dan, Dion, Boomer. They'll have a first half and See that uh, 22 yards rushing for Kansas City. You know if Priest Holmes and Tony Richardson were able to play for Kansas City that that would be a different number and Oakland just wailing away at the Chiefs with already well over 100 yards Greg Robinson the defensive coordinator uh, well, trying his best he's going to have to take a lot of chances to try to slow this attack second and nine the fake and they're looking for Porter now they throw to Rice incomplete Eric Warfield covering and very well indeed. Eric Warfield, uh, outstanding job of shadowing Jerry Rice. No team in the league runs more crossing patterns than do the Oakland Raiders. This time it's Rice working underneath. There you see Jerry Porter crossing the other side. But look at Warfield just tagging him all the way. Outstanding coverage by Eric Warfield. Third down and nine at the 15. Garner in the backfield. Doug Jolly, the tight end in the game. He's one of the three out to the right. Gannon then looks right. Bumps. Somebody must be open. Right, All day to throw. Now to Jolly. Touchdown. Doug Jolly, the rookie from BYU with his second touchdown of the year. Well, that's just not fair to the Kansas City secondary that they have to try to cover somebody for eight or nine seconds. What a job of pass protection by the front wall of the Raiders. Only a three-man rush for the Chiefs, and that proved to be a mistake. Somebody had to come open, and Jolly yeah. finally beats Belzer. I don't care if you got eight guys in, in coverage or not. After eight seconds, somebody's going to break free. Janikowski adds the extra point. The Raiders uh, grew this wet, muddy field, go 80 yards and 14 plays, and the pass to Jolly, the payoff. The interesting thing is Rich Gannon only threw it because he found somebody open. He didn't have to throw it even when he threw it. Watch this. Still nobody anywhere near him, and he... Yeah. Trust me, he could have held on to this football for at least another three or four seconds. Now the Chiefs got eight people in coverage, but after a while, Jason Belzer just lost track of Doug Jolly. And I'll tell you something, Jolly had a tremendous block on the touchdown run by Charlie Garner. He had the best block of anybody up front. Look at that block there by Frank Middleton. And now Jolly gets a touchdown of his own. And I'll tell you something, he deserved that after the block he made on Charlie Garner's touchdown run. You talk about that block, uh, as you see Gannon celebrate, uh, Jolly may have learned that from his dad. You remember Gordon Jolly played seven yeah. years in the NFL with the Lions and Seahawks. And I also remember that the Raiders had another tight end from BYU, didn't they? Uh, Mr. Christensen. Yeah, some guy named Todd Christensen, who was... Uh, Obviously a tremendous tight end here. One of the best in Raiders history. And I'm sure Doug Jolly well aware of the fact that his predecessor from BYU and the career he had with the Raiders. On this field, it's tough to come back from a large deficit. And the Chiefs now staring at 14-0 with a minute. 34 left in the half. Dante Hall, who has been their top weapon, watches that one skid through. That just... Running it up on the green. Uh, hit it short and let it roll. <laughs> feel like I'm at the British Open. <laughs> well, this is a really tough spot the Chiefs find themselves in now. No running game and two touchdowns behind. Underneath and complete off the hands of Eddie Kennison. Punt, 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 interception. Uh, the story for the Chiefs in this opening half. And again, without, you don't, I don't want to belabor the point, but they really entered this game shorthanded offensively without Priest Holmes and without Tony Richardson. 
It's just a, uh, I know that Tony Gonzalez is uh, the best tight end in football, and Trent Green is having a great year, and it's a wonderful line. But without Chris Holmes, it's, it's really a struggle. And, you know, Tony Richardson, the great blocker, is on sideline, and Johnny Morton is at a catch. They're ruling it by a catch at the 29, a yard short of a first down. You know, the, uh, remember when Richardson was injured uh, at Denver, that was the first thing that came to Dick Vermeil's mind. I have to take out half my plays without Richardson. What a catch. Look at Johnny Morton get that football, although he didn't really maintain possession of it after he went out. That's one of those that could be looked at from up in the booth, and I think it's going to be. We're inside two minutes. The replay booth could look at it if they want, and I think they are. <laughs> that ball came loose when Johnny Morton hit the ground. You must hit the ground and maintain possession of the football. And under these wet conditions, how long of a skid are you allowed well, before you lose it? I think we'll take a couple different looks at it. This is not coming from the sidelines. This is coming from upstairs. When does the ball come out of there? Can't quite see from there. I think we'll get a better look here. He gets a knee down inbounds. No, that's not a catch. That's not a catch. Before going out of bounds. No, that'll be overturned. I think that's pretty much of a uh, no-brainer right there. Wonderful effort. The receiver never possessed the ball going out of bounds. That's all the pass of the world incomplete. The down will be third down with 10 yards to gain at the 20-yard line. Tony, why did it take you so long to figure that out? The ball's on the ground right there. It's on the ground right there. That was, uh, that's about as easy as it comes. So it's third down and one. Well, yeah. Even that guy knew it. <laughs> And I'm not sure how much that guy knows, but I'll bet you he knew that was an incomplete pass. I just heard your limo driver turn off the ignition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's a, that was my other job. Third down and 10. And uh, Bo Richter lined up at fullback now out to the right side. Derek Blaylock is the setback. Green underneath, complete, but short of the first down as Tony Gonzalez is whacked by Rod Woodson. And the old man can still uh, lower the shoulder as well. Well, poor Tony Gonzalez, it's just a short pass, a high ball. He goes up and snares it. He holds on to it, but when you're that big, that good, you are a target. And you look at Rod Woodson over, I'm not, I'm not so sure that maybe Rod didn't get the worst end of that collision. Well, they can let it run down because there's no chance for the Raiders to call time, and the play clock is 9-8. And now the Chiefs are the ones who call time. With 46 seconds left, they have one timeout remaining. It's 14-0 Raiders in the rain in Oakland. Back at the Coliseum in Oakland, Lincoln Kennedy limping back to the locker room. You know, the Raiders have a lot of banged up bruises, a lot of limps in their giddy up. Uh, they haven't had uh, any weeks off since back week three. Their bye came early. And that's what's so crucial for the Raiders uh, playing for the home field advantage and a week off if they win today. Straczynski to punt to Tim Brown, who's moved way up near the 40 yard line as Straczynski's had two short kicks. And another. Takes a little bit of a chief roll to the 40-yard line and uh, is blown dead with 35 seconds left. So the Raiders, despite the fact they have no timeouts, have the ball at the 40 and the chance for more. Bunny? Dick, just an update for you on the Raiders. Lincoln Kennedy suffered a left groin pull. He went into the locker room because they want to do some tests and observe him at halftime. He's questionable right now. Hopefully I'll have another update after the half. All right, thanks, Bonnie. And that means Langston Walker, number 66, will be playing at right tackle. He's a rookie from California, the number two draft pick of the Raiders. He's 6'8 and a growing 345. Uh, Oakland native, went to high school here at Bishop O'Dowd. And, of course, just played about, what, 15 miles right up the road at Cal at Berkeley? That's right. Wheatley wrapped up by...
by Marcus Patton. Just protecting the ball was Weedley. A indication that that may well be the last play of the half. And the Raiders are leaving the field. And uh, we'll go to drier quarters as will the Chiefs with Oakland enjoying a two-touchdown advantage. Well, you said it early, Dan. Size on a wet field is a tremendous advantage. And the Raiders are so much bigger in the pits than are the Chiefs. Pacific storm dictating some tough conditions, but the Raiders prevailing at least through the halfway mark, 14 to nothing. And again, so much at stake for them. They get all the advantages with a win today. They're the number one seed. Well, when you stop and think about it, if they were to lose this game, they could play next weekend. <laughs> And as we saw guys like Lincoln Kennedy nursing injuries, Charles Woodson, who had surgery on Christmas Eve on a broken leg and has a chance to play later, uh, the rest very big for the Raiders. And if you look at the numbers here for the first half, they really reflect the total domination by the Oakland Raiders. You see only 63 yards of total offense here for Kansas City. And up here, 125 yards rushing for the Raiders. Charlie Garner has 89 of those yards on a very sloppy field. So the Raiders have been playing keep away. The Kansas City Chiefs without Priest Holmes can't monopolize ball control on their side. So, boy, do they face an uphill battle here in the half coming up. Marcus Knight, you saw him, number 83, back to return the kickoff to start this second half. Knight from the University of Michigan, where he was the wide receiver for Tom Brady, the New England Patriots Super Bowl quarterback of a year ago. And the Patriots in Miami play tomorrow. Big game here on CBS to decide who wins the AFC East and the advantages that go with that. Michael Husted to kick it off. Uh, Morton Anderson uh, on the injured reserve. After last week with his injury, Marcus Knight at the 12. It's to dry land. And then it's tripped up at the 35. <laughs> so we're, we're going to start describing where someone is, whether they're in the water or on dry land. <laughs> Well, you played uh, in conditions like this oh. many times, but you linemen love this stuff, don't you? Well, it's uh, as an offensive lineman, you hated the fact that you didn't have great traction, but uh, you, and because if you slipped, all of a sudden your guy could be on top of the quarterback, so you, you didn't want to leave something to chance. But it's a, uh, you're right. It, it's normally a game where you don't see many people get hurt because the guys aren't moving fast enough to hit each other very hard. Raiders start from the 34 with Garner in the backfield behind Gannon. And he squirts through to the 38 before Marcus Patton makes another Chiefs tackle. Charlie Garner with more yardage rushing than the entire Kansas City offense in the first half. And on the season, compared to a year ago, you see less touches of the ball, but the production over 400 more yards and seven more touchdowns. And keep in mind, that was coming into today's game, those numbers. So Charlie has certainly added to that, as you see already, 16 rushes on the day, making 17. And another first down as he storms out to the 49. Well, we saw in the first half this offensive line of the Raiders really enforce their will on the defensive line of the Chiefs. And right now you see Charlie Garner's being the beneficiary of that. That was a huge hole off the right side. And this is a tough spot now for the Raiders defensive line. I mean, for the Chiefs defensive line. Somehow they got to start playing with some intensity. And Garner again kicking through the hole. Gains another four or five. He's over the 100-yard mark on the afternoon. About 106, 107 yards now. John Browning made the tackle. And what is remarkable, and it's not just this game, it's when you watch these great pros week after week, under these conditions, we have not seen a fumble loss today. We've seen some fumbles, but we haven't seen a fumble loss. A couple of snaps from center that didn't quite get there, and Hall fumbled out of bounds on a kick return. Up the middle, Garner, and he just plows for a first down to the 41, just methodically using Garner and Wheatley to spell him, just blowing through that defensive line of the Chiefs. Well, for Kansas City defensively, they give up a lot of yards anyway, but this is where all the negative thoughts start to creep into your head, that you're, you're playing shorthanded on offense. Your offense hasn't even come close to scoring. These guys are huge and talented. They're banging away at you. It's a bad field. 
and somehow you've got to focus somehow you have pride has to kick in you got to focus and you just can't get pushed around you got to find some fight somewhere somebody to make a play force yeah. that fumble here's Wheatley nothing inside so the big man goes outside and picks up substantial yardage Jerry Rice helping with a little uh, shelter block on the corner Harry Kicks, number 98, right here, screaming that he was held. And he was grabbed by somebody from the inside. Might have been Barrett Robbins, the Pro Bowl center. That might be how he got to the Pro Bowl, though. You don't get the players vote that way. <laughs> Jerry Rice, uh, he, he gets in there. He hasn't uh, had a very busy day catching the ball, but you see him making a block downfield. Raiders way above their rushing production, but that's because of the conditions. If it was a dry field, they'd be throwing it. Wheatley runs into the stack and then moves it 40 yards to the 34. It'll bring up third down and two. Mike Mislowski, who is looking to become the top tackler in Kansas City franchise history, understand that is an unofficial statistic. The clubs themselves keep it, but he needed only six tackles today to have more than Gary Sp Spaney, uh, Spaney uh, back in uh, 79. Spaney had 157. But I bet they wish they had their number one tackler from a year ago still on the team. Donnie Edwards who's out in San Diego. Toss to Garner behind those black jerseys. He waits and then goes out of bounds with a first down at the 30 yard line. It was third and two. He got four behind Robbins and Adam Frew. This time it was Jason Belzer's turn, number 29, to find himself out in space. Not sure where the ball carrier is. He gets gobbled up right there by Roland Williams. Look at him. Turns around. Is there a ball carrier around here somewhere? I'm, I'm not sure. Garner tries this side. Look at him cut. And you can see the field condition once you get to near the numbers is quite good despite all the rain. Gary Stills, Eddie Freeman in on that tackle. And Garner a little slow getting up. He has been the workhorse. A couple plays ago, Dick, we showed how the Raiders today are running the football well above their season average. But, you know, that's a little misleading, their season average. They only average 99 yards a game. But part of that is because so much of their passing game is in lieu of a running game. There's such short passes, a lot of them behind the line of scrimmage. They're, it's really, really taking the place of a running game. Wheatley in, and Maslowski gets to him for no gain. Patton there to back it up. No, no, no. Well, the Raiders are wanting it to be that anyone who wants to go there has to come to Oakland to do it. Third down, and Gannon goes toward the end zone, and Jerry Rice. And no flag down. There was some hand checking down the field between William Barty, the cornerback, and the uh, Hall of Famer to be Jerry Rice, but no flag. Well, William Barty is just riding the hip of Jerry Rice all the way down the field. Barty is not afraid of Jerry Rice's straightaway speed. Now, William Barty did not play the football. That's why the crowd thinks there ought to be a call. But really, the bump. And take a look at the play clock, play clock down there in the car. He barely got it there. Close enough that the official gave the benefit of the doubt to the Raiders. But the reality is Barty didn't bump Rice until after the ball was there. Gannon has to call a timeout. First of the second half. Going huh? forward on fourth down and seven. It's 14-0 Raiders here in the third. It's fourth down and seven. Kansas City down 14. Looking for a stop here as the Raiders go for it. Garner, the running back. You good. Watch out, watch out. And Gannon to throw. And he fires over the middle, complete to guess who, Jerry Rice. And Rice with a, another clutch grab and a first down at the 12. Well, if this line isn't run blocking, they're giving Rich Gannon a great look downfield. And you can see the Jason Belzer tried to make a play on the football, but he ran around Jerry Rice to the wrong side. And that allowed that throw from Gannon to be caught. Yeah, it sure looked like he had yeah. a chance to break it up. Garner stops, starts, and gets oh, a yard face or two. Big face Dwayne Clemens got too much of the uniform. Oh, and that's going to be the personal foul kind. That spun Charlie Garner clear around. Charlie doesn't like it. You can see him there in the lower left. He's taken some exception to getting handled like that. 
That'll be half the distance from the 10. Personal foul, grabbing a face mask, defense. The penalty will be assessed. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. All the neck exercises you do, that's where it pays off. Dwayne Clemens just spun Charlie Garner's head all the way around. By the way, the explanation we got on that timeout was the officials were going to call the Raiders for delay of game. You saw the game clock, uh, the play clock rather, had expired, but they gave the Raiders a timeout. Gannon called one right under the wire. First and goal from the five for Gannon and the Raiders. And here's Garner. Gannon to Garner, and he gets a couple. Good defensive charge that time from Dwayne Clemens, perhaps uh, motivated by making amends after the face mask call. Clemens from Riverside, California. Eighth grade sold peanuts at minor league baseball games there in his hometown on his way to the University of California where he was a teammate of Tony Gonzalez. 14th play of this opening drive of the second half. Gannon to Garner again. Caught in the backfield and a loss. Eric kicks. Slashes in from his defensive end position to make a big tackle for Kansas City. Well, this play intended to go off tackle inside, and Charlie kicks it to the outside, and Eric kicks with the upfield rush. Just absolutely no place for Garner to go. And regardless of whether this drive ends in a field goal, a touchdown, or no points whatsoever, what a drive by the Raiders to start the second half. Yeah, they're going to consume uh, some eight minutes. Third and goal. That's Jolly, the touchdown maker. And under pressure, Gannon had to throw it away as up the middle, Lou Bush, the veteran linebacker, able to get through that big offensive wall. And out comes Janikowski in the field goal unit. Right up the middle, unaccounted for, right between guard and center. And and no chance at all for Gannon. And any field goal in these type of conditions, it's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> Just to get a good grip for the That's snapper right. and a good hold. <laughs> at least they seem to be on a decent piece of turf. And it is good. a short shot, yeah. 27 yards. There's no standing water where Seabass is going to have to kick. Leckler to hold, and it's right down the middle. Janikowski's 26 for 33 on the season. And the Raiders up their lead to 17. <laughs> As we approach New Year's Eve, they're in the mood to celebrate here in Oakland with a 17-0 lead. That guy's smarter than you think, though. It's dry in there. You stop and think about it. Hey, I give credit to every one of these fans. This is a miserable day to sit outside and watch a football game. And there are, this stadium is nearly packed. Not many people stayed home to watch this on television. They're here in person. Janikowski with a little punch shot toward the side. It might have gone out of bounds, but it's fielded by Derek Blaylock. And he's got some speed and then slips down at the 34. Covered there by Brandon Jennings. And we go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, as you watch the Raiders know, this is a team that feels they were distinctly better now than they were when they lost to the Chiefs early in the year. There were running back injuries. Tyrone Wheatley and Randy Jordan were inactive. There were costly turnovers, a Rich Gannon interception, and a very uncharacteristic Jerry Rice. This time around, they're coming off sweeping Denver for the first time since 1994, says Rich Gannon. Plain and simple, we're just a lot more confident team. Yeah, the uh, Raiders were shorthanded much as the Chiefs are today, so turnabout unfair play for both sides. Quick throw to Gonzalez. And the tight end screen works for about six yards to the 40. Anthony Dorsett made the stop. Raiders uh, started out hot, won four in a row, and then they lost four in a row, one of those at Kansas City, and they're finishing uh, very strong, and uh, that was one of the goals of this team for December to be decisive, and they have a chance to go out four and one. Yeah, they want nothing to do with the state of Missouri. Two of those four losses at St. Louis, at Kansas City, and then a couple of overtime losses to San Diego and San Francisco. 
Give us to McLeod, and he carries some tacklers with him to a first down at the 45-yard line. Rod Coleman in on the stop, and Coleman is worthy of uh, note here at his play this year. He leads all interior linemen in the league in sacks. He has 11 this year. He's only 285, plays inside East Carolina, and Dick Vermeil said, boy, you look at film. I'm just glad he doesn't play more than he does. Uh, anybody that generates 11 sacks from inside. <laughs> That's just extraordinary production. That, those are John Randall type numbers. The give is inside the Blaylock, and it didn't fool the Raiders at all, especially Eric Barton, linebacker, and Napoleon Harris, the rookie. Now, whom do you think deserves to be the NFL Coach of the Year? Here's some suggestions. Uh, Callahan, Fisher, Gruden, Reeves, Reed. Maybe you have someone else in mind. Cast your vote at NFL.com. Now, one of those guys is a rookie, Bill Callahan. 46-year-old rookie, but what? He's a knowledgeable guy, loves his uh, game planning. Won't even talk to anyone Monday and Tuesday game planning. Here's Eddie Kennison on a flanker screen that works. And a first down into the 44 of Oakland. Rod Woodson with a stopper. Well, you can see that Eddie Kennison hasn't played a very big part in this game so far. All you have to do is look how clean he is. <laughs> Eddie Kennison has not been in the midst of much action today when you're running a pass route like that and you're spotless. Yeah, back to That's that coach's <laughs> poll. How about Jim Fossil and the job he's done with the Giants yeah. to get them in the playoffs? Right. Trailing 17, I think the Chiefs first possession, second half, take the reverse, and the screen is gonna go for a loss as Blaylock smothered by Napoleon Harris, the number one pick of the Raiders out of Northwestern this year, and started in game one in that middle linebacker position. Anyone named Napoleon automatically goes to the Raiders in the draft. That's one of the NFL rules. Isn't that the truth? A lot of nifty ball handling, but talk about a dead play. That was Napoleon Harris just that was he, he might as well have been the intended receiver all the faking and everything that didn't affect him whatsoever third Napoleon following Napoleon McCallum and Napoleon Kaufman to play in the silver and black this time they give it to Hall and he can't get away from Reagan Upshaw for the moment finally kicks free and is tackled at the 46 yard line but Upshaw slowed down the play well, that's called honoring your responsibilities. And Reagan Upshaw had backside contained. He didn't get sucked down too far inside. And Dante Hall trailing about four feet of tape behind him. Look at that. <laughs> look, at, look at the spray. This guy. That's his lifeline in case he gets lost in all that water. Oh. Little guy, you know how to find him. Upshaw should have just held on to the tape. <laughs> And 20, and Trent Green has to call a timeout with just under three minutes left in the third. Uh, Raiders in command, 17-0. Draw play, Blaylock finds some open room, belts his way down to the 39-yard line, but they needed 20, and he got 16. Anthony Dorsett got him to the wet turf. Well, I think they picked up enough yardage where the Chiefs are going to go for it on fourth down, or at least ought to think about going for it on fourth down. Green waved they, off the punting team, said, get out of here. That was, you know, so you, you, you say, why on earth do you run a draw? Well, sometimes in that situation, they, they really work for you. And Kansas City has to spend its second time out. on fourth down and four green to throw and it's incomplete intercepted actually the interception cost the Raiders yardage as Torrey James picks it off and it hit the ground the Raiders would have gotten the ball on downs upfield about seven yards well talk about pressure they're throwing the ball to a rookie in Omar easy oh no interception it hit the ground yeah but they're throwing the ball to a rookie. Boy, that's asking an awful lot. And fourth down, right in his hands, but he couldn't handle it. 
Raiders take over on down. Bill Romanowski, 240 consecutive NFL games. He's never missed a game all the way back to junior high school. High school, college, now in the NFL. This guy answers the bell every weekend. And he plays with such an intensity. Uh, this guy's motor runs. It just runs at a, at a pace that a lot of guys can't keep up with it. And how much did the Denver defense, do you think this year, miss Bill Romanowski? Not just his play on the field, but the intangibles that that intensity brings with it. Yeah, that spirit of toughness. He said, I, I know I still want to play because I love to prepare. Well, they take over and downs the Raiders at the 39. You see that baseball infield when you get that long shot. That's where it is wettest because that's where they re it after the American League season. As Garner dances and uh, finds a partner early this time. Two-yard game for the Raiders as we're down to the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Our partner, Bonnie Bernstein, will be in the, in, in the studios in New York. And... Uh, Taking you to those games with all the highlights and all the special action. She is indefatigable. It's Garner again, Patton oh. with a tackle. And Charlie went face down oh. at the end of that run. <laughs> there was no being able to twist his head to the side to get away from that. He goes face first into the mud puddle. Watch, watch the end of this play. Oh, oh. <laughs> I hope he had his eyes closed and he's not wearing contacts. We have splash down, Houston. Plunk, we did a sound effects for that one. On third down, Garner. They can't get him down in time, and he has a first down as he fights his way to the 46. What a game for Charlie Garner. If there is a most underrated player, unrecognized player in the league, here's the man. He well, is a super player. It might be to the casual fan, and it might be to someone who doesn't watch. But anyone who plays in this league, anyone who covers this league, Charlie Garner is no surprise whatsoever. He did it at San Francisco. He's done it everywhere he has been. But this offense is just perfect for Charlie Garner. Tyrone Wheatley is here to do a lot of the heavy lifting. His receiving skills make Rich Gannon a happy guy. On first down, it's Wheatley in for Garner, and the big back carries white jerseys with him down to the 38-yard line as the third quarter comes to a close. Wheatley and Garner as they just are rushing Kansas City through the wet mud of the Coliseum in this one. Three in the book. Raiders 17, Chiefs nothing. We ran into a Raider fan at halftime. He said, that's not rain. Those are tears for Dion. We thought we had Dion Sanders coming out here. Give us the Wheatley. And Wheatley stopped right at the sticks as Eric Hicks makes the tackle. Let's go down to B square. Well, Dick Lincoln Kennedy is done for the day. Not so much because his groin injury is that severe, but more as a precaution. The place where he makes his living between the trenches, between the numbers, is a mess on the field. One other network nugget, as Dan likes to call it. Rich Gannon, not a glove guy, but because of the weather in the Bay Area the last two weeks, he's been practicing with gloves and is using them in the game. All right, thanks, Bunny. And indeed, there he is. Uh, gloves, and uh, it's something more and more quarterbacks in the wet and cold weather. Finding that they can throw the ball just as well. Well, That's Rich, it. it's it's all about feel for quarterbacks, and it's it's not where you make a decision at the last minute. Oh, I think it's wet today, and I'll wear gloves. You've got to put in the time practicing with them. You've got to you've got to log a lot of hours out on the practice field wearing them. Because I can't imagine being a quarterback and coming out and trying to wear gloves in a game where I really haven't had a whole lot of experience wearing them in practice. No short of the first down. You know, the Gannon story is, is really inspirational to any athlete in any sport. Here's a guy that was uh, drafted out of the University of Delaware. They didn't think he could be a big league uh, quarterback. So New England thought, well, in the fourth round, we'll make a running back. He runs well or a defensive back. And he kind of labors through. He had some good seasons. But there was always another quarterback to take his spot until he came here four years ago. And now he's won four straight Pro Bowl nominations. Twice he's been the MVP in the Pro Bowl and might well be the league MVP this season. And a couple of NFL records there at the bottom coming in with his 411 completions of 300 yard games and he was tickling Dan Marino's yardage yes, record. Was. Third down and who else but Zach Crockett. That's a that's a long run for him. That's about three yards on third and one and another first down.
Well, this is what it looks like from behind. Zach Crockett, what a comforting feeling. The huge line, John Ritchie, number 40, right in front of him. And it's just this, this line of scrimmage today has belonged to the Oakland Raiders offensive line. 190 yards yeah. rushing to only 35 for the Chiefs. Oh, they have been dominant. And the toss to Wheatley. Running downhill. And to the sideline and out of bounds with another first down at the 21-yard line. And we talked about Rich Gannon tickling Dan Marino's record. He, he needed 475 yards. And uh, what do you think Marino said when uh, uh, back at the CBS uh, studio when he saw the weather out here today? <laughs> he won't be over 5,000. I'm the man over 5,000 yards in the season. <laughs> oh, what a bad break for old Rich. <laughs> what a bad deal. Uh, Dan would never admit it, but what player after all those great years hey. doesn't protect his mark in the, this league? Left in this league. Up the middle, Crockett to the 20. And they use uh, Crockett on first down. Dwayne Clemens and John Browning up front for the Chiefs to make the tackle. <laughs> Balutes the drink. On second down from the 20. Garner manages to get back to the line of scrimmage. Where it'll be third down and seven. Charlie Garner from the University of Tennessee and how many great running backs have come out of that volunteer camp. Every year there seems to be a top-notch talent. I just love Charlie's all-around game. He, he's not a big guy, but yet he's capable of running with power. He brings an explosiveness and a quickness. I think we've all seen him demonstrate that over his career. But with 91 receptions coming into the game today, there's a guy that has a complete game. On third down, and it's short yardage here for Garner. John Browning makes the stop for Kansas City and gallantly trying to hang close here as time runs out on them. 11 and a half minutes down by 17 in these conditions. And I think we were all shortchanged uh, something very special when Priest Holmes went down in Denver two games ago. He just had a chance to put together one of the great years that any running back in the NFL has ever had and he still did even only playing 14 games 13 and change because yeah, 13 and change 13. right on uh, fourth down and four a long four Gannon looking for Brown he's covered ran and is hit as he throws and uh, the Chiefs take over they're going to call out a fumble and as they go through the mire, and Kansas City finally gets a turnover as Shenard Hart's the safety and Derek Ransom collaborate on that hit of Gannon. Ransom recovering the loose ball. There's Hart's with the hit. And Ransom, uh, <laughs> well, where is it? It's there somewhere for you, Derek. <laughs> with the sack. Ransom almost recovered, but uh, pushed it along where teammate Marcus Patton fell on the loose ball, and on the turnover, the Chiefs at their own 32. Still without a point on the board, and Mike Cloud gets only a couple yards out to the 35 before John Perella makes the stop. Oh, they uh, can almost do some of that uh, <laughs> slipping and sliding the mogul uh, action here at the Coliseum. Well, it's been a bumpy ride for Trent Green and the Kansas City offense. They still haven't even reached the 100-yard mark in total offense. As you can see, the highest scoring team in the league today being shut out, but not even 100 yards in total offense. 90, 92 or 3 yards is all they've been able to put together so far. And a shotgun on third and eight, and timeout's going to be called. The Raiders didn't like the defense they had on the field, so clock stopped with 10-16 left in the fourth. It's worth noting the Chiefs at 8-7, and seven, down 17 to nothing 
Their seven losses were all by a touchdown or less. They have been competitive throughout the entire year. Competitive in the league's most competitive division. It's a third down and eight at the 35 with Green in the shotgun. Throw is complete. And Johnny Morton has a first down for Kansas City out at the 47-yard line, covered by Terrence Shaw. That's Johnny Morton's first catch of the day. Eddie Kennison, the other wide receiver, only has two. And keep in mind, it's not like uh, the wide receivers on the other side are getting a lot of work. Jerry Rice and Tim Brown only have four between them, two each. So this game has been played on the inside. Hurry up offense for the Chiefs and off the fingertips of uh, Mark Bo Richter. Jerry Gibson there close on the coverage for the Raiders. The Chiefs have struggled all day to try to get something going. Give a lot of credit to this Raider defense. They have been all over the place and they've tried trick plays. Dante Hall coming around the corner. He can't get away from Reagan Upshaw and ends up getting a face full of water. And the NFL's uh, second best rushing team at 156 yards a game today a grand whopping total of 37 green on second and 10 over the top and complete for a first down to Bo Richter and the young man from Hastings uh, and now a flag is thrown back at the line of scrimmage let's check that out Kansas City's margin of error is getting awfully slim linebacker with a hold so the first down down at the Raider let's see where they do spot it inside the 40 yard line and you see Bill Callahan looking at the scoreboard he knows in the National Football League nine and a half minutes is plenty of time to score 17 points green and the offense now working into the wetter part of the field at this end a wobbler should have been intercepted Torrey James had his hands on it James kind of a miracle story here's a guy that has a fractured lower right leg and is playing after just a couple of weeks well, you can see that that ball from Trent Green just got away from him severely overthrew Eddie Kennison he has a steel plate to stabilize that fractured fibula, and Charles Woodson's going through the same yep. operational device, and here he is just three weeks later back in the lineup. And off inside, uh, Derek Blaylock, and Blaylock is twisted down inside the 35 by John Perella. Well, that's one of the reasons the Raiders are so adamant about winning this game because Charles Woodson with that same surgery they're holding out and hope that he'll be able to come back and play in that first divisional playoff game which would be right here in a couple of weeks if the Raiders hold on to this lead if, Green. if. <laughs> scrambles to the 30 but that'll be shy by about three yards of a first down Rod Coleman makes the tackle and the clock continues to run and uh, they've got to go for it even though ultimately they need a field goal in this on this field I think this is a long way to ask Michael Houston to kick it fourth and a long three even longer considering what's a, directly ahead a big pond green shakes free throws it up incomplete Bo Richter hoping that his size could get it, but Terrence Shaw and others were there to bat it away. And the Raiders take over on downs, and now the crowd can sincerely start to assimilate the importance of this win today. Timeout with 8.15 to go. Those pictures are like a Merv Corning painting. We've sent so many NFL pieces of art that are so treasured. I hope there's a lot of hot water here because these guys are going to take some long hot showers. Taking over on downs and Crockett just bowling its way through the Chiefs defense. Now out in the clear at the 50 Warfield. Gets him out of bounds at the 37. Well that will be almost the equal to his entire season's total on one run. 33 well, yards. William Barton 
T came up and was going to put a hit on Zach Crockett, but he kind of mailed it in right there. You got to wrap it up. You got another chance at him. And Zach Crockett that time, I, I think you, who had the bigger heart on that particular play? I think Zach Crockett was the guy who wanted that most. He wanted it the most. Kansas City's day total 44 yards rushing and Crockett gets 33 on that rumble out of Florida State. We uh, talked about his brother last week, Henri Crockett, who was a linebacker with the Minnesota Vikings. First down at the Chiefs 37. Wheatley this time. Chase to the sidelines, turns the corner, and then is pushed out of bounds near the sticks. Mike Meslowski did the defensive work, and Wheatley has almost another first down. Friday, January 10th on CBS Network. We have a big day again tomorrow here on CBS Sports, and every game with so much at stake. And the big one, the Miami at New England contest early here on CBS. Trying I don't to get. think he got that off. No, and if he did, it should have been illegal procedure. Full start. Full start, illegal snap. Offense, five-yard penalty. Remain second down. Bonnie, what do you have for us? Well, Dick, Bill Callahan's less than seven minutes away from taking his team to home field advantage throughout his first year as a head coach. And Rich Gannon really thinks his coach is the unsung hero. He says it's all about consistency with Bill, the way he treats his players, the way he was unwavering during our four-game losing streak. And I really admire that. One other thing Callahan threw out to his players before today's game, with a win that makes 33 wins for the last three years, that makes them the winningest team of the new millennium. He used all of the numbers to say here's the reasons, of course, the biggest being to have the number one seed in the NFC to motivate his team. As Crockett head down, makes it to the 31-yard line. Well, the playoffs are all about peaking at the right time, being healthy at the right time. Uh, the Raiders right now, uh, if they get Charles Woodson back, if he comes back and can be a productive player during the playoffs, this is a relatively healthy football team. This is a team that its role players are all playing the game at a high level. They're well coached. Such outstanding veteran leadership in guys like Rice and Brown and Gannon. Rod Woodson. <laughs> Rod Woodson. I, the Raiders seem to have it all going for them right now. Rocket again. Runs through two tacklers and drives to the 27-yard line and very close to a first down as Belser finally gets him into the wet moss. Ooh, I talk about I talk about being healthy and we've got a Raider uh, who's hurt at the conclusion Roland, of this play. If Roland we, Williams, I, be, I believe. Yeah, we see Zach Crockett coming right at us and there's how it oh. happens. Ooh, he lands right on the back of the left leg, it looked like, of Roland Williams. Their tight end who's been hurt with a turf toe and you could see that they fell right on his exposed leg. The Raiders playing to the conditions, running the football, and it pounded out well over 200 yards, rushing in a 17-0 lead as they attend to Roland Williams on the sidelines. Wheatley with a carry, and shy of the first down on the first down carry. Eric Hicks with a tackle. Garner with 136, his best of the season. Wheatley chips in with 66, and Crockett with 51. All of them more than the Kansas City total rushing of 44 yards. They've just dominated the play. It's nice to be Mark Trestman, the offensive coordinator of the Raiders. You have so many quality football players. You have so many gifted receivers, gifted runners, and it all starts behind a talented offensive line. Wheatley, roadblock, turns the corner the other way and drives to the 20, a couple yards short of a first down. Well, it's pretty easy to keep track of this game. All the scoring belongs to the Raiders. Charlie Garner walks right into the end zone. Doug Jolly, after about eight seconds, of Rich Gannon being able to survey the field and then we just saw the field goal by Sebastian Janikowski and the big goose egg being thrown at the Chiefs by the Raiders defense. 
They have owned this game from the very beginning. Third down and a short four. There goes Crockett. First down to the 12. Three Chiefs to bring him down. You know, Dick, initially I thought Kansas City was going to get off to a good start. Dante Hall with the kickoff return runs it all the way into Oakland territory and nothing came of it. Zach Crockett enjoying, I think, getting a chance to carry the football in something other than just short yardage situation. NFL Films will have fun with this. <laughs> We've had fun with yeah, it. <laughs> this is the type of game where just, this is where football in many ways I think looks its very best. In the elements. Crockett again at the 10 and down to the 9, 8 yard line. Slowed up by Warfield and finishing the job with Jason Belser. Well here's our lineup tomorrow. Tune in early. 9 o'clock out here on the west. Second from the left was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Deion, I know. It? No, that was Dan Marino. Oh, second he was for the left. Oh, I know why he's smiling. I was just wondering if Sanders uh, was a mutter. Oh. I don't remember if he was a mutter or not. Didn't matter to Dan. Crockett, a couple yards. Dan Marino just glad to see Rich Gannon handing the ball off so much today. <laughs> <laughs> Timeout called with just 2.22 left. The Raiders 17 up. And five inside the ten, leading 17 nothing. Crockett into the end zone for a touchdown. He ran over his namesake, Ray Crockett, and others. Coming right at you. There's Ray Crockett. There's Jason Belzer. Both of them end up on the ground and barely even slowing Zach Crockett down whatsoever. That's, I think Zach Crockett has shown a little exuberance here in getting to, to run the football uh, in more of a conventional setting. I think he's having a little fun. Janikowski kicking this one offline a bit just to get in a dry spot. 218 remaining here. Unrelenting offense on the ground for the Raiders to match this rainy day on the east side of the bay and a 24-0 lead. Just 2.18 left. Hey, there's Jimmy Kimmons, our cameraman down there in the end zone. He's in the black hole getting handed around. <laughs> I guarantee if this was 24-0 Kansas City, he wouldn't be up there. <laughs> I put my money on that. <laughs> Jimmy showing a little bravery there. Watch out for those spiked shoulder pads. Well, another big time drive and Kansas City's just been, they have lost the battle of being physical today to the Raiders. Victimized all day by poor tackling in their secondary. Janikowski toward the sideline to Blaylock. And he surfs his way out to the 30. New Year's Eve Day next Tuesday, CBS Sports jumps in. New Year's Eve Day. 209 left for the Chiefs to try to get something on the board. They go to the screen, and this will get some yardage. Blaylock at the 40, and Blaylock out to the 49-yard line before Eric Barton can make the tackle. And Barton comes off holding his left forearm. Two minutes to go in Oakland. So the Raiders are in the position every team wants to be going into the playoffs and the Chiefs will fall to eight and eight but so many positives in this season for Dick Vermeil who also is excited about his first ever vintage a 1990 Cabernet Sauvignon from Jean Louis Vermeil Vineyards and the he 99 wanted you to have vintage? this happy new year. Well thank you Dick and, and we're so happy for Dick Vermeil, who by the way absolutely 100 percent will be back next year as the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. His mission is not complete, and this football team, I think, has uh, a real upside to it, Dick. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, the fans in uh, Kansas City, you know, without no. Holmes and Richardson and today Greg Wesley, their top defensive back, and there's some guys coming off the injured list next year. Young players like Bo Richter that have really shown they belong. And a great offensive line that will all be back intact. And uh, as if uh, it isn't wet enough here in Oakland. <laughs> They're trying to sneak up behind Bill Callahan. These guys need a little work. Since 1994, the last time that the Chiefs were shut out by the then Los Angeles Rams. And the Raiders in 85 meetings, this 85th meeting, first time they've shut out Kansas City. The Gonzalez pushed out of bounds at the 40. That's enough for a first down, and uh, Bill <laughs> Callahan didn't even notice. No, he finally got it, and boy, how's that for a smile? Here it comes. Oh, <laughs> good hit. Hey, Chris Cooper got it as well, <laughs> number 75. Uh, defensive lineman couldn't get out of the way in time. The players just... They really love and respect Bill Callahan. The job he's done, as Dick mentioned earlier, has never before been a head coach. He was the offensive coordinator under John Gruden. They're still very close friends. I imagine John is watching and cheering for his pal Callahan. And that one almost intercepted by Terran Shaw. Could have been a touchdown intended for Mark Bolrichter. Well, this Raider team has been very businesslike this year. Severely stung by the loss in New England last year in the snow. They came to work this year with a real sense of purpose. They also are quick to point out that they remember having the home field advantage and losing here to the Ravens when Baltimore went ahead and won the Super Bowl. And last year would have had the home field but lost to the yep. Jets in this game, the last one. So I think you'll see I think they'll be pleased with what they've accomplished, but this is a football team that very much knows that it means nothing if they don't finish it off. It will be unfulfilled potential and promise for the Raiders if they don't finish this season off with a trip to the Super Bowl. Yeah, when you look at those uh, veterans of six over 36, all Pro Bowl stuff, you know, the Rice and Browns and the Romanowskis, that's why they're here to get one more ring. As Green goes down and a flag as well. I think the Raiders were well offsides. A couple of the Raiders were well upfield before before the snap of the ball. Offside, defense number 99. Five yard penalty will result. First down. And of course, last season's AFC Divisional Playoff game in the snow. Referee Walt Coleman ruled that play as Tom Brady fumble recovered by the Raiders as an incomplete pass. The tuck rule forever to be embraced by Patriot fans and to be rude by those here in Oakland. But Gannon, when we talked to him very early in the season, said, I put that on me. Had we won against the Jets in Oakland in game 16, we wouldn't have been in the snow in Foxborough. There goes Roland Williams up to the locker room, uh, the tight end for the Raiders. He's got a sprained MCL, which is a ligament in the knee. Green going deep to the end zone, almost intercepted for that one. And the shutout almost disappeared as well as Bo Richter almost got that. Tonight it's a great night for drama on CBS. Will be kids. There goes a cup of mud. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it's still a kid's game. And there they are, kids. Yeah, when you get them in the battle, they're not worried about their banker. They're a bunch of boys. Green. And it's batted away by Tory James, intended for Eddie Kennison. You, you can't do that in a dome. You know, you just can't. That's what's missing with indoor football. I know that a lot of teams have them. My hometown team has one, too. And sometimes you're there out of necessity but you just can't beat the natural elements sometimes this is uh, no it's you know it's ugly but at the same time it's awfully beautiful it's the only sport That's, where you could be playing in the heat and humidity 100 yeah. degrees uh, summer like weather then you oh. play in this condition you could oh. be playing in a snowstorm you got to win in all conditions i remember at rfk one time i was playing against ron mcdole and he picked up a handful of mud and it was a bullseye he hit me right between the eyes with a big clod that clock may have tripped up Green, who backpedaled right into a sack as Reagan Upshaw and Travian Smith fought over it. It's going to be a happy night for this crew in the black and silver. 
22 seconds to go. Clock running. First time that they'll be the Raiders, the top seed in the AFC since 1985. Last play maybe for Green. Wants to go deep. Gets it downfield for a first down. That'll do it. But the clock runs and the Raiders are the number one team in the AFC. Bill Callahan in his first year as head coach of the Oakland Raiders has them in the ideal position. They get a bye and home field advantage as long as they win. And a great look there. And Bill Callahan shaking hands with Mike White, who gave him his first job as a graduate assistant at Illinois. And there he is with Dick Vermeil. And White now an assistant to Dick Vermeil in Kansas City. The Chiefs say goodbye to the season on the final game of the 2002 regular year. The Raiders are locked in. They know what's ahead, and uh, you'll find out the rest tomorrow as the, all the pieces of the puzzle are put in place.